Hey guys, welcome back to Home with Theta Guru. So today we're gonna to be talking about an issue that a lot of people have where they find they have to maybe boost their Atmos speakers or they're boosting their center channel. So we're gonna have a quick video on a major issue besides room treatment. We've already gone over room treatment and how the reflections can really cause chaos to how clear vocals and things like that are and just like uh, the room can be very fatiguing. We've already covered all that. Uh, but this is going to be something that a lot of people don't really cover, how the room can actually be level matched with an SPL meter, but we still find like we can't hear the vocals or we, we think that, you know, the Atmos we're having to boost them so that we can hear them like we feel they should be heard. You know, if they're all level matched, we're just not hearing things right. It just doesn't sound right. Things don't sound, this speaker doesn't sound as loud as that speaker. But with an SPL meter, it's measuring the same. So we're going to look at why that is. So first of all, when we set up our rooms, most of us use the internal noise, the hiss noise in our processor receiver, you know, that shh noise. And you can also use test disc, you know, like some of the Dolby demo disc have embedded noise. And those are great because you can also make sure that you're calibrated for reference. You know, if you're not sure if your receiver is properly calibrating it, you can back, you can go and use one of those discs to confirm. Now, I do want to mention that References all over the place. Studios, even in the uh, studio PDF, it's got like a 6 dB, you know, variance in what they should consider reference to be. So there's no set tolerance. Okay, uh, set your volume level where you think it should be. Most of the time for me, it's gonna be negative 20. Sometimes I find it's negative 15 on my volume, on my dial. Uh, it just depends on what I'm watching. Crank it till you like it, till it sounds right, that's all that matters. But what is very important is that all the speakers sound the same. So when objects are moving around the room, they move around and pan smoothly. We don't have jumps or we don't have certain speakers where we really didn't hear that object pan to that side of the room or to that point or we had weak panning uh, because even though the system's level matched with a meter, it doesn't sound level matched. The loudness is not the same. Now, in the ARC tutorial video where we learn how to kind of tune a room, which is what a professional should do, if they come in, you know, it should take them hours. It's not something they can do where they just hit the auto button. If they're doing that, they're not really trained in how to tune a room. Uh, you have to listen. You have to also take the target and you have to manipulate the target so it sounds natural and make adjustments to it. You know, if it's a little bass heavy, uh, the vocals are a little bit muddy, you know, you can kind of adjust the, the target. It's gonna be different in every room because the decay is different in every room. But the important thing to start with is that the response at the main listening position or at, in the seating area, you know, you can have a few seats that you wanna sound great. The response for all those speakers must be very, very similar. And this is where a lot of people fail. Uh, some room corrections don't even EQ past like, like arc stops at 5K unless you tell it to go further. But anytime you tune a room, you should be looking at this speaker to speaker and seeing how does this speaker match my target. And this is the reason why. Let's look at this speaker right here. This is a very popular speaker, the Klipsch 504C. This was measured by Danny at GR Research. He actually built crossovers to fix poorly designed speakers. And this is uh, an extreme example. I mean, it's like whoever designed the crossover from Klipsch was maybe had a hangover that day. I don't know, but the drivers are not even in line. They're not, they're out of phase. The tweeter is substantially louder than uh, the woofer. So this is gonna be a very, very bright speaker. The vocals are not gonna be great because we got this humongous dip where the drivers are out of phase. Uh, and that's around 1500 Hertz, right? The crossover point right around there. It's, it's just not gonna perform well, no matter what you do. Now we don't need a speaker to measure perfect on axis. Because even if you have you know, a speaker that measures perfectly flat, raw, you know, not in a room, it's going to measure different when you place it as center, as right, left, main, as you surround, as rear, as Atmos. That same speaker is going to measure a little differently. So room correction is going to be used anyway, but we do need a speaker that has drivers in aligned for one thing and also good off axis that resembles the on axis because we can fix little wiggles or issues in the response. That's part of room tuning. So we don't want to like disregard a speaker because it's got a few little issues in the response. It could blow away a speaker that has a better raw response by a mile. So, uh, but we need to pay attention to things like this where we have drivers out of alignment. Your receiver can't fix that. It can only, it will only attempt to raise dips, you know, maybe five dB depending on uh, what processor you're using. It's not going to even attempt to fix such an issue like this. So you're gonna have trouble hearing it. But also what's gonna happen is it's going to sound different than other speakers don't that don't have these issues. Um, 
Room correction, like again, is only gonna do so much. So the response of this speaker is not gonna look great even after room correction is done. So if you've got this match with maybe some of the, you know, 8,000, the Klipsch Towers or something like that. But when you play your pink noise on a speaker like that, uh, where its response looks nothing like other speakers, on the SPL meter, it will read the same dB level. But when you're listening back, it's not going to sound the same. Uh, so level matching a speaker like that is not going to work well. Now, sometimes we have speakers where we can fix all the issues. We can make them sound all the same. We can get that response to match our target, how we want it to sound and look at the seats. Uh, like ARC stops EQing at 5K. You know, one speaker may drop down after 5K or kind of slowly taper off where, you know, another one is linear, you know, doesn't do that. So when you level match it, the, the speaker that drops off is gonna be a little quieter because it doesn't have that upper energy. So it's not gonna sound the same. It's gonna have lower, the lower end's gonna be louder. It's not gonna have as much top end. It's just not gonna sound right. Uh, because you need to go back and tune them to the same target and make sure that the response is similar. And then when you use your SPL meter, now they're gonna sonically sound the same. Now remember in the studio, the technician that was doing the sound for whatever you're watching, he had a center channel, he had Atmos, everything's aimed at him perfectly dialed in. He didn't have these issues. He could hear the vocals. His Atmos was, was great. You know, sometimes you don't have time to really tweak the Atmos to perfection. But the thing is, they don't have problems hearing it. So if you have problems hearing it, there's an issue in the setup. So when people boost their Atmos, for instance, you know, if they've got down firing speakers that aren't even aimed, they're so far off axis, their upper energy is substantially taking a hit. It's rolling off a lot. We even looked at some speakers like uh, a few weeks ago, we looked at the KEFs, uh, down firing speakers that some people think work great for Atmos. And we showed you why it's actually a really poor choice and what happens seat to seat as you get further away, loses a substantial amount of upper energy. Your processor, first of all, you don't really want it to boost it because if you boost it for here, you're making it too loud in this seat over here where the upper energy is higher than the lower frequencies. So it's not gonna sound right. And then as you move over here, it gets even worse because you've lost even more up energy. It's just a mess across the seating area. So when you have your speakers aimed, you know your Atmos need to be aimed as much as possible. When you have them aimed, you pay attention to how the target looks and how every speaker is every speaker somewhat following my target. So they all sound somewhat similar. When we have, we meet those goals and then we go back and calibrate our system to, so they all sound the same level with the SPL meter, they're gonna sound the same level to our ear. So now everything's gonna be perfect. Assuming we don't have any nasty reflections killing our vocals, you know, adding that, uh, smearing our vocals, you're gonna have great vocals, you're gonna have superb panning around the room. Also, this is assuming that you've uh, seen episode 49, I believe that was 49 on Atmos, so you got your Atmos properly positioned with plenty of separation from the bed layer so we're not smearing to the bed layer. You do all those things right and it's gonna sound fantastic. You're not gonna have to boost anything. Now, we do live in a world, or home theater world, where a lot of us like high back chairs because we wanna kick back and relax in our home theaters. Uh, the studio technician, you know, he's got a low back chair. Heck, this one's probably a lot higher than what they would have. So their rears are not blocked. Our rears are blocked in most of our home theaters. If we have home theater seating, uh, partially blocked at least. So the rears are a little bit different because they, they're compromised. The surround should not be blocked at any time. You know, if a head, someone sits next to you and blocks it, you need to think about adjusting the placement of your surrounds. We've already been over that. I'll pull mine slightly forward a little bit, but uh, your rears, they're compromised. You know, if he had weak panning behind him, he should have already kind of adjusted that up a little bit to compensate. Seat backs are a totally different story. So those I actually play, uh, there's a Dolby demo disc. I think it's a 2016 disc. Uh, there is a demo on there with wind blowing all around. It's like a nature scene. It's just, it's a really, really cool scene for Atmos. I mean, fantastic. But when the wind's whipping around the room, I use that to set my rears. I usually boost them about two dB, you know, if I've got high back seats. Now this is not a cheap hobby. So you do need to pay attention and kind of learn these little tricks because this is really gonna save you in the long run. It's gonna save you from upgrading speakers all the time. 
uh, fixing these issues is going to keep you from having to upgrade processors because you're always looking for better sound. And a lot of times better sound is, or really if you haven't done those things, better sound is found in room acoustics, treating reflections on your walls and understanding how they're affecting what hits your ears and how that sounds to your ears and how it's fatiguing. Are your speakers properly aimed? We, are we sitting 60 degrees off axis of some of our speakers and expecting that to sound good? You know, so a lot of times it's, it's setup issues, it's room issues. That's where real performance is found. We do need good speakers. We need good on axis or decent on axis, but we need good off axis that resembles the on axis so we can correct any issues in the response of room correction. If you have any questions or future videos y'all wanna see, drop them down in the comments below and let me know. And if there's something everyone wants to hear, or I think you know that that's a really good question, I should do a video on it, and then we'll do a video on it. So don't forget to subscribe to the notification bell so you know the next videos come out, guys. And that's going to be it for this one. I'll see y'all for the next one.